I'm Francis Collings in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina. And at a momentous time for this country with the culmination of the trial of Ratko Mladic at The Hague, we've been talking to the Bosnian Prime Minister, Denis Zvizdic, about the future of his country. Can I ask you first of all about what the trial of Mladic means to you as a politician? The verdict is a message to everyone that evil cannot defeat good and that no one, anywhere, will try to achieve their goals in this way. And finally, the justice being served in Bosnia and Herzegovina and all of the Western Balkans is a good message and an instrument to create and sustain permanent peace and an open process of reconciliation and cooperation inside the country and the region. Do you see it as a form of closure, of closing a door on a certain bloody period in your history? Our history in the last 25 years has been burdened by moments that nearly destroyed the essence, tradition, centuries-old existence of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Never in their history were Bosniaks organized, and nor they did start any kinds of project that would go against Bosnia and Herzegovina as unified, multi-ethnic state. The things that happened 25 years ago were intended to destroy that multi-ethnic fiber of society and to disable a country that was one of the best examples of multi-ethnicity on European soil. On the other side of the verdicts and current politics, there is a policy of reintegration of an essence, a quality of coexistence and cooperation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, where we live together, not one next to each other, but with each other. I'm sure that lessons from verdicts like this one, after initially strong reactions, will open the door to prosperity and a better future for the country. The views you've expressed, are they shared by your, your colleagues in Republika Srpska? History is still a burden that influences relations inside the country, as well in all the Western Balkans. History is too often used in daily politics. But for us, it is very important that on the Western Balkans, its territorial integrity, sovereignty and international legal status is respected by each and every country. All our processes regarding the past must be based on truthful, relevant historical facts. We will never accept any attempt to falsify the history and facts, or any revision of historical events. It is crystal clear, based on the verdicts, what happened in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is clear that genocide has been proven, as well as many other crimes whose aim was to exterminate and move, first of all, Bosniaks, and then also Croats from the territory claimed by Serbs. That is something we need to base our future cooperation and trust upon. How do you cope personally when you have to deal with colleagues who will say openly that the genocide at Srebrenica did not occur, that it's false, that it is, to use a modern term, fake news? The question of genocide is a key moment of truthful reconciliation and of the creation of good relationship in the region. The constant denial of genocide, and we know that denial is the last phase of genocide, is not helping full cooperation and trust inside Bosnia and Herzegovina, nor with our neighbors. Prime Minister, if I can finally just ask you about the future, about possible EU membership. If you and I sit down in, in 10 years' time, what sort of progress will this country have made, and do you think you will be? by then a member of the European Union? Our candidacy has been accepted. We are working on a serious document that is called EU Questionnaire. We will answer more than 3,000 questions. Our answers will comprise of more than 25,000 pages, and they will show the real picture of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the level of achievement in our legal processes and laws and their compatibility with the EU. We expect to finish that process by end of this year, and that in the next one, we will get candidacy status and that we will open a new chapter in the relationship between Bosnia and Herzegovina and the European Union. That's the positive side. There's also a negative side. And you have a lot of critics who say that this country still has too much corruption, too much nepotism. Is this something that you recognize and can this improve? We are not satisfied with the fight against corruption and organized crime. But based on the actions that we have seen in the last 12 months, it is clear that state is ready to deal with the most complex cases of organized crime and ready to adopt a legal framework that will try to minimize corruption. Prime Minister, thank you very much indeed.